Organogenesis was incorporated in 1985 and we've been at it ever since. Organogenesis was the first company to get an allogeneic cell therapy approved by FDA when Amplograph was approved for venous leg ulcers in 1998. It went on to get approved for diabetic foot ulcers in 2001. The product is bilayered, two cell types with collagen as the scaffold and it's about the circumference of a hockey puck. It's manufactured and distributed around the U.S. and, and in various other countries to close chronic wounds. We've managed over the last five years to build the company primarily by reinvesting the revenue. So simply put, every dollar in has been reinvested and we've gradually built our competencies, our infrastructure, our people based on that model. One of, one of the great advantages is that it's, it's a one-size-fits-all, is that the source material is discarded infant circumcised foreskin, so we begin with a little piece of donated tissue, and from that we dissociate keratinocytes and fibroblasts, and we put them into cell banks, and of course they proliferate and proliferate, and at the end, one little piece of donor tissue can create between 50,000 and 100,000 pieces of living skin the circumference of a hockey puck. So obviously within those cell banks there are stem cells that are growing and dividing and in fact recent data from Tufts has been able to identify that even in the end product we can identify uh, epidermal stem cells that are still active. We see it as a piece of living tissue. There's three elements, living human keratinocytes, living human fibroblasts, and type 1 bovine collagen. The way the product is developed is first we manufacture the dermal layer by seeding living human fibroblasts onto liquid bovine collagen. After a week we seed living human keratin keratinocytes on top of that and at the end of a three-week process we have the final product that's ready for release to then be packaged and shipped to wound centers around the country. That the product comes in a box about the size of this to a wound center which keeps it plus or minus two degrees at 23 degrees Celsius which is the optimal temperature to protect the cells and to extend viability of the cells in the, histo in the histological form of the product. When the center is ready to use the product, they open the bag and inside it there's a sterile bag that contains the product within a Petri dish. So they open up the bag and then they can just tease out this piece of living tissue and apply it to a well-prepared wound bed and then cover it up with a primary non-adherent dressing, wrap it up and the procedure is done. The basic users are the top 1,000 chronic wound care centers that tend to be outpatient centers in community hospitals around the country. So patients that have gaping chronic open wounds on their legs, on their periphery, come to these wound centers. Basic care would be to wrap up these wounds, to debride, to get rid of the dead stuff, the necrotic tissue, to manage infection, and often that's enough. Where Aplograph comes in is for the many patients where Mother Nature doesn't do the job sufficiently on her own. And with, for those patients that are recalcitrant to good basic care, you can add Aplograph as an adjunct. And in randomized controlled phase three trials, it's been shown to close more wounds and to close them faster than good wound care alone. Because Aplograph looks and feels and handles like a split thickness skin graft, some people expect it to behave like a split thickness skin graft, but in fact it doesn't. It heals by secondary intention, not by primary intention. A skin graft would be applied to a patient, would take, and the wound would be closed. That's not the mode of action of Aplograph. Over 250,000 applications to patients, we've seen pretty firmly that you can apply it, it persists for several weeks, and then these allogeneic cells are eventually competed out and the wound closes by secondary intention. So the, the mode of action is very complex, multifactorial, but what we've seen is that these allogeneic cells stimulate the host tissue to close itself. We would define repair uh, uh, more akin to scar tissue, and we see that what Aplograph and some of our other technology does is result in a better quality of healing. So it's not just closing more and closing faster, but we have a growing body of evidence in multiple applications 
that shows that these cells can actually stimulate better quality healing measured through, through various aesthetic parameters. The flagship product is Aplograph, and Aplograph is approved, available, and in fact is the leading cell therapy product in the world. We recently announced an uh, alliance with Integra Life Science where they will commercialize an acellular tendon repair product on our behalf. Uh, and that will be used for many tendons in the body ranging from hands to Achilles tendon. And that's commercially available now. One of the things that is very exciting for us is in 2009, we completed a successful phase three trial, so full completion database log statistical analysis that will be submitted to FDA shortly uh, for what we believe will be the first cell therapy to stimulate soft tissue regeneration in the mouth. And, and the, the concept is we all have gradual recession of our gums over time, and to, in today's standard of care, what is done is a palate graft implant. So a little bit of the palate is surgically removed and pasted on to the front. Now that works, but there are numerous limitations. Number one, it hurts. There's a three-week pizza burn of a recovery time. But even more important than that, there's limited palate and often the physiology of the disease is such that you have more than one gum that recedes. So the idea, the holy grail in periodontists world is to have a limitless supply of living cellular tissue and that's what our concept is. So the study that we've been able to complete has demonstrated that we can generate sufficient tissue as a primary endpoint, but the exciting thing in addition to that is better aesthetics, better color, better texture, better patient preference. So we will be submitting that shortly and we expect that that will be the second major cellular product within the company. We are committed to the allogeneic business model. It's our belief that both are, are interesting and exciting, but you have to commit from a business perspective pretty early. It's, it's very hard to be both, and the infrastructure that we've built is for mass production, is for a one-size-fits-all allogeneic approach. The model that we've gravitated to after trying many other permutations is we believe that our competitive advantage is that we're the only company in the world that has built the unique skill sets to translate living cell therapy from translational applied research through full scale-up manufacturing to commercialization. So we, at earlier stages, outlicensed the marketing and sales to major companies and that didn't really work that well, nor has that model worked well for some of our competitors. So we felt that we wanted to own the product and be responsible for the product all the way from manufacturing to its usage in the clinic. And as a result, we built our own commercial team. We have 100 what we call tissue regeneration specialists that are deployed around the country. The product is manufactured in Canton, Massachusetts. These cells have a 15-day shelf life. They're shipped around the country into different countries around the world. When the clinic orders them, if they, if they order by 4 p.m. today, we can get it there by 8 a.m. the next morning and we have this tissue regeneration specialist on hand to manage the logistics, to make sure that if there are any challenges, issues, questions that we're on hand to deal with them. And uh, that model has resulted in some pretty significant revenue and business results.